Atwejide is a lawyer. She is also a founder of the National Interest Party. She's a presidential aspirant, actually candidate of her political party ahead of the 2019 general elections. What are the top three priority issues you intend to take on as president of Nigeria? Um, for me, the first thing of utmost priority is accountability and transparency. Um, my administration will work hard to make sure that the people who are um, working with the government are very accountable and we operate an open system so that everybody can monitor what's coming into the process of the government, what's going out, how it's being controlled, what um, their policies are driven and how funds are sent out to tackle issues in the country. I believe that a lot of the problems we have in Nigeria today is um, possible because of the high levels of secrecy that we see within public office. So I will work hard to make sure that um, there is serious openness in government so that everybody can monitor money, follow money, and be sure of where it's coming from, where it's going to, and the reasons why it's being spent. So that's definitely the first thing I would um, look into um, in government. Another place I'll go to is PA. Um, every working society in the world knows the importance of electricity. So the rest of the world is busy investing seriously and making sure the investment is working to make sure there's power in their countries and help the economy to grow. Whereas we are investing so much and then not making sure that the power is coming. So my government will look to um, review a lot of the regulations, like the way the regulations are, uh, are set in Nigeria. The same companies cannot uh, produce transmit and distribute electricity. There is a requirement for every electricity produced in Nigeria to go to the national grid. And the national grid is controlled by government. So that's where the, 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 the problem is in Nigeria. We won't get light because there are some people who still have the power to prevent the light comes in in the name of national grid. So what I would do is to get the administration to bring in uh, private investors who would be able to not only invest in the production of electricity but also invest in the transmission and distribution so that you can actually have private entities that are fully fully able to produce transmit and distribute electricity and you're also open to alternative energy sources of course there will be a lot of alternative energy sources whether you're talking about wind or uh, solar energy or hydro energy you need all the alternative uh, energy sources and then the more you produce the better for you so that you can even have surplus that you can now be exporting but we cannot rely on our government till date anymore because it is clear that the willpower to get it done is not there. There's too much vested interest problem. So the best thing to do now is while you are tackling the laws that makes it impossible for things to operate properly, allow the private sector to actually fully come in into energy production, transmission and distribution. And that would definitely help us make sure that there's energy. And, and the, third, the, the third issue? Um, now, there is, it's hard for me to decide whether I should go with health first or with education, but I would like to say that those are other two areas that I, I think... I think you can try with education. <sighs> education, for example, we need to get all our children in school. You see so many kids on the streets, they are selling goods and all sorts of things in the name of uh, mommy is too uh, poor, we need to support. And there are women, like I've had so much experience where I deliberately pick up some of the women that sell things to me on my street like all those ones that sell akara or uh, bread or whatever and you tell them okay I don't like seeing your children on the streets I don't like seeing them outside of school I will pay school fees I'll make sure they go back and then you do it and then Three months down the line, the kids are back there. And they're like, oh, again, is it what happened? Mm, you know, it is so hard. They give you excuses. And then you do it again. And before you know it, she has moved away from your area. And then maybe you happen to go somewhere else in another part of town. And then you see her with those children still on the street. So I think it's time to actually uh, make laws that criminalize parents whose children are not in school. If you see a child on the road selling anything, hawking, whether it is in the north or south or east of Nigeria, the target should be the parents. Why is this child not in school? It is your responsibility. It is now against the law. Is this partly why your 
platform is promising free primary education to all yes. Nigerians. Yes. All How do you intend to go to see through this? Is this through the federal government of Nigeria or you're supposed to be working right. with now, this? Everything still works from the federal level, so it has to be a federal government um, regulated policy. But the, what you have to understand is that no matter how much you, cent you centralize the power, everybody can already delegate duties to everybody else, no matter what level you need the work to be done. So yours is to make sure that you give somebody the responsibility on the lower level, and then that person gives somebody else beneath him or her and make sure that every area is working in the local government in the councils in the states at the national level make sure our children are in school punish parents whose children are not in school by the time parents realize that it is a crime to keep your child out of school they will buckle up and then actually punish them not that you tell them it's a crime and then when you see parents who are keeping their children out of school uh, they tell you how they are pregnant or what the problems they're having and then you are lenient to leave them no you actually punish them and when they realize that it's no longer lip service this is happening parents would not stop their children from going to school then you have the vocational schools like nigeria there's there's this problem of quota we have you have children or kids or adults or semi-adults who make 300 400 in jam but they have to stay back for people who make 20 30 because there's this um uh, how do you say a quota system where certain percentage goes to certain people and whether or not they live up to the expectation on the exams level they, they still get uh, admission and then those ones who made it who made the cutoffs are not going because they've already hit the quota to me that's wrong we need to revisit this and what i am saying is Everybody should get education. Anybody who is interested, after you have done your primary and secondary school, which should be compulsory, if you are interested in going through higher education, you should get it. However, if you are not able to do it on the level that the examination board has said, it's not a problem. You can still get that education from practical experience. You can go for a vocational study. Where you go, if you want to be, for example, an engineer, you go through a mechanic shop or something where they are teaching you all the skills that the other people are learning with mathematics and English, you are learning it, practicing it. So when you spend the amount of time you need to gather all those skills, you get the same degree there's, as a person who is getting it from there's, there's also, university. There's also a funding problem in Nigeria. Let's not forget that our tertiary education, for instance, the system is plagued by endemic strike actions. We have unmotivated staff and poor infrastructure, even for research. How do you intend to, to, to look at the issues of funding? A lot of it will have to be privatized. You have to actually look at the fact that our government right now does not have a lot of money and the generation of money aspect will take a while to happen. However, we have a lot of private individuals and a lot of foreign bodies that are happy to come in and pump money into our system and help us develop. I have brought a lot of different organizations here and companies that wanted to start schools, but the governors, the ministers, and whoever they were, they will tell you, no, if you don't give me $10 million before you, I'm not even really willing to listen. When you remove those kind of people or make sure that those kind of rules, those kind of conditions are not applying anymore, you'll be shocked at how much, even us Nigerians, a lot of us that are in the diaspora are yearning, they are eager to come back home and start to do things in this country that they have done in so many other countries in the world, but the, the environment does not welcome them. I am saying my administration would open it up if you can do it, come and do it. They have the money, they have the brains, they have the experience. Open it up, let them bring in the expertise. Teach the ones at home who want to learn how to teach. Teach them and then make sure you're paying them their salaries when it's due. Every 28th day of the month, pay Is them. It's not at the risk of increasing tuition, especially for those at the tertiary level, because you've already said that yes, the primary level will be... end up with having tuition fees increased, but that's why you still have to also have funding available for students. Make sure that there are student loans, that every, every student who is qualified to have like for example you cannot offer loans and then you don't have uh, conditions i would say if you are over the age of 30 you have to have compelling reasons why you want to go to university because the time you should have gone you've, you've missed it so the, it should be possible but only if you have compelling reasons but if you are 16 18 20 25 and you want to go to school there is no question do you have your qualifications do you have admission yes 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 and then you get the loan you go to school and then when you come out of school when you start working you start paying it back most advanced countries that's how they that's how they educate their young ones so you have to make sure that you provide funding that the 
people who are ready and able to go to school can access to make sure they can pay this tuition. Of course, you have to regulate also to ensure that they don't become unnecessarily too expensive so that it becomes an elite thing, but also make sure that the funding is available for students to access so that they can pay their school. No strike, no, there's absolutely no reason for strikes because most times you hear eh, they didn't pay us our salary, they didn't give us this other pension rights and whatever, but right. make sure those things are in place. If they're in place, what, is, what are you calling for strike for? There's no reason to... Let's, let's stop jobs, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, according to the National Bureau of Statistics, hmm. 16, <laughs> 16, <laughs> 16 million Nigerians are yeah. currently unemployed. Yeah. And that's a major crisis. Mm -hmm. What should we expect from the first year of the UNIS presidency or administration as a case what may be? You can in, the, in, in terms of um, those that are supposed to be employed per year. The first year. you can expect. I need you to be Unis precise. Yes, administration please. is that we'll be inviting foreigners for visa lottery because there's too much work in Nigeria. And I'll tell you how. You have industries in this country that nobody is harnessing the opportunities. Education is one area where I tell you multi, multi, multi job opportunities there. Entertainment, health, just name any sector in Nigeria we are underperforming everywhere. Yet, we have quite qualified or at least almost qualified people. And then people that are so eager that you spend three months training them, they are ready to work. You can actually put them out there and leave them to do the jobs when you give them the training of just three months. What I'm saying is, open up the system. All this, give me 10 million or 50 million or 100 million dollars before you do no. Remove that. You will see the investments coming, the whole roads. You will just see that Nigeria will turn into a manufacturing and, in fact, everywhere people will be busy. How many roads do we have in Nigeria that are good? Put people there, even all these are road, put them there, be paying them 1,000 naira per day, let them be doing the bitumen and whatever. They will work. From Lagos to Sokoto, they are ready. They will use their leg and they will be doing the work. So we will have so much work in Nigeria that we must do visa lottery to bring people to work I, I, in Nigeria. I think I'm, I'm back to the numbers again. 87 million Nigerians we'll are living in extreme poverty. We we'll have 50 billion jobs. If that's by year, here. immediately. I'm just telling you. 50 that billion is, jobs. That's not, that's not realistic. It is not realistic, but I'm telling you. I need you, you to be realistic. What's I, the number per year? Sweetheart. Should we expect from you? I'm telling you, I will give you numbers. Right. But what I can tell you is that anybody that is serious about working in Nigeria will get jobs if and when I get into government. Because the reason we are not working is not because there's no work to do. And it's not because there are no companies or individuals willing to employ the workforce. It's just because our policies makes it impossible. We deliberately put out policies there that doesn't let people do what they need to do. I have brought companies in this country that we didn't once they had to go because of the... All of the bureaucratic bottlenecks will be If cut it off. is bureaucratic, it's okay. But this is like complete enemies of progress in charge of our affairs. They won't let you do anything. Even when it is finally favoring them, they will still look for a reason to bring you down because it's just fun to do. You need to take all that, take away all the policies, all the systems that allow that. Open up the system. Make sure that there's transparency and accountability so that people who are coming in can actually come in and do what they have told you they are coming to do. Employ the people they have told you they are coming to employ. Not like all this thing we do. We bring Chinese, there are 50 billion Chinese to come and do work and even in as, as little work as carrying bitumen, you bring Chinese from abroad to come and do that. We really don't need those kind of systems for now, but I'm saying we would even be happy to have that when everything is opened up. Talking about opening up, I think that, I think that takes me to the next question. Mm -hmm. Your fellow aspirant, Alaji uh, Atiku Abubakar, the then Vice President of Nigeria, mm -hmm. has said that he's willing to um, privatize the NNPC. What would you do about the moribund industries owned by government? Like Ajokuta Steel Plant, for instance. Um, Ajokuta Steel Plant, when you follow the stories, you just see that it is just absolute, I would say, wickedness on the part of our leaders to deliberately make sure that plant never came to be. Because um, I followed uh, Mrs. Akpoti when she was making the report of the experience with um, Ajokuta and all the things that she discovered, how Obasanjo was deliberately preventing the Ajokuta Steel uh, um, 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 uh, project from happening happening, how Osibanjo and all of them were part of the committees and still ended up, you know, like you hear a lot of things and you realize we do have or we have had quite a lot of evil leaders who do not want to see this country um, become a world leader and who do not want the people to become better. Um, hopefully, 
I would not have such people in my administration so that we can have people who truly believe in the potentials of this country and in the welfare of our people making decisions for government. Ajaokuta Oil Steel, uh, 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 Ajaokuta Steel Company is an area where I would say, okay, there's so much potential there, we need to revive it. So I, um, are you willing to privatize the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation? Many people have actually called it the four towers of crop. I agree Without that having... NNPC is the ogapatapata of corruption entity in Nigeria. Um, however, it's not necessarily in the privatization of NNPC that you will solve it. It's more in the opening things up, making sure you deliver on your um, aims to make our system a lot more accountable to us, the people. NNPC is like the oil zone. Nigeria is way too dependent on oil, if you ask me. So I would work hard to make sure that we come away from that. By doing that, you'll actually also reduce the importance of NNPC to our economy. However, privatizing NNPC is something I would have to like pay uh, more attention to look at the pros and cons of having NNPC in the public hand and having it in the public hand. I haven't concerned myself so much with it so far but i'm sure that the problem is not necessarily whether it is in public or in the private hand but it is in the system that it is operating whether it is allowing the people to see where funding is coming from how it is being used how much oil is taken away who the oil wells are going to how the um, uh, revenues are generated how they are expended those are the things that are the problem and you could have the same problem even if an npc is in the private hand Nigeria is actually trading at a loss to keep PMS at 145 naira per liter at the moment. Um, would you remove the subsidy at the risk of increasing the price of petrol? Um, like I said, we depend too much on oil. We depend too much on how much money Nigeria is making from generating uh, petroleum products, exporting them, and then re-importing finished products. Um, why are refineries not working, for example? Why don't we get our refineries working and get our oils refined here so we don't even have to pay anybody? But before you, get, before you get there, you have to start at a point, right? before you get to the process of ensuring that... Wasn't it removing... Uh, what's the, capa the capacity of our refineries? removing subsidy that made for 145 naira. Absolutely. Uh -huh. So now, normally, subsidy should have been removed, and we should have been fine. We are still paying. NMPC calls it under recovery. We are still paying for subsidy. Exactly, and that's what I'm telling you, that the problem with NNPC is not necessarily being private or public. It's a system the extremely inefficient system that they have introduced to the place and made the normal. You start first by uprooting all those issues. You may actually find that there's no subsidy being paid to anybody. You may actually find that it's just like a few hundred thousands that is paid as subsidy and the rest is just uh, um, imaginary figures that they give to us. So until you actually get there and you're seeing clearly, you can't really tell where the problems are. We know that our refineries should be working and our oil should be re getting refined in Nigeria. Dangote is building a new refinery. All those things, why are they not working? Those are the things we should pay attention to and make sure they start working so that we can do all our refining in Nigeria and not even need to import any finished products from anywhere. Unless we have so much use of what we have, it's not enough to go around, then okay, we can look at importing from uh, uh, other countries. But I doubt that we will not be able to produce enough to serve this country because we do export a lot of crude oil products. As someone from the southeast of Nigeria, why are you against the agitation for Biafra. I will quote you. You did say that zero tolerance for deliberate disruption of public peace and harmony in the guise of standing up for the liberation of any group or groups within Nigeria under your presidency. I am so against everything Biafra, Arewa, all those things that they tell you North must go away, South must go well. away. Everything that tells you break away from Nigeria, I am 100% against them all. But they are not say, most of them are actually not saying break away from Nigeria. Oh, Biafra is. Biafra tells you they are all cats and dogs and uh, cockroaches and we need to Wouldn't get away. Would you address the issues that they are talking about from Biafra? What Depending. issues are they talking about? Can you remind me Inclusion, exactly? Inclusion, for instance. Okay, and it is only Biafra that is not included? 
Are the Southerners, the Afenifers, are they included? The Arawas, do you think they're actually included? Everybody is marginalized in Nigeria, and why we can't each see it is one thing that shocks me. But I look at the northerner, he is feeling marginalized. Come on, his, his life is not going anywhere. He's not able to go to school, he's not able to feed, he, he doesn't have electricity in his house. It, nothing is happening for him. But agitation is part the, of democracy. You look at the southern person, the same issues, and then the Igbos. Everybody is marginalized in Nigeria because we have a government that doesn't care. Do you understand? So everybody has a reason to be angry, but I don't think anybody has any reason to say, let's break away. There's nothing like that. What we should be doing is, okay, these are my issues. The other person has his or her issues. Okay, now how do we work it out that my problems are taken care of, but the other man's problems are also taken care of, and so the other person. I don't want to even hear about it. Be a framba. I don't want to hear about it because I do not believe in dividing Nigeria. I believe in keeping us together. We have a bigger market. We are actually very good with each other. We have integrated. Thanks to Gowan, at the time he brought the NYSC and a few other programs, he actually allowed us to go around and see how things are done in other countries. And it has helped us. You have a lot of Igbos that are married to Yorubas, a lot of Yorubas that are married to Igbos, outsiders. You know, like we are actually quite well integrated. A lot of people who are doing these agitations don't even think about it beyond beyond the now. I am hungry. I don't have food. My son made 380. He doesn't have admission. They're not looking beyond that. They're actually only seeing that and not seeing how everything else will go to waste if we fight this our Biafra or Arewa or Afenifera war or mid, middle Midwest agenda. I also heard that one too. They have the Midwest one who say they are not part of the North, South or Eastern region. They are their own Midwest. So it's just too much agitation. But the reason is the lack of inclusion like nobody no region feels carried along every region feels neglected and that's why everybody's agitating you could be charged for making an ethnically you could be challenged you know for making an an ethnically charged remarks about the full annie headsman you did call them a terrorist organization oh yes What's the whole world the that? whole world has called them terrorist organization i didn't but call them terrorist organization fulani, out of the not, out of oh, fulani headsmen are either militia for instance yes but the fulani headsmen we're talking about are the ones that carry uh, guns AK-47 guns and go off killing people in the churches, go off cutting off women and bringing out their babies and slamming the heads of the babies on the floor. We have seen a lot, and they do call themselves the heads, the Fulani headsmen. It only follows that the rest of us will call them Fulani headsmen as well. It's not that I have a lot of headsmen in my party. In fact, when you tell them, well, introduce yourself, I am this person from Bono State and I'm a headsman. They're very proud headsmen. And we understand them, we respect them, we love them, because we know they're not part of the evil headsmen. But that's what they call themselves and that's what the world calls them headsmen full any headsmen going off to kill uh, farmers and all that we see it we see it zamfara play two benue everywhere they call themselves headsmen and they do this really horrible acts and it is acts of terrorism anything you do that you have to accept such force on another person or community because you want them to do thing in a, something in a particular way it is terrorism so I'm not sorry. I'm not How do you that. intend to solve the internal security issues in Nigeria? Uh, that's that's uh, something I blame quite a lot on the current administration's nepotistic way of doing things. We have people from this same region heading nearly all the security outfits in Nigeria. It's going to be hard for them to be objective. Almost impossible because when you think about going in and doing what you need to do to safeguard lives of, and properties and then you're thinking that, oh my God, my brother, my sister, my uncle, my cousins are involved. You're highly likely to be too lenient or reluctant to even carry out your objectives. So one of the things we need to do with our security agencies is to also open it up allow the best trained people from the different regions take control don't make it a thing of my people or the other sets that i trust or those ones that are loyal to me no make it the people who are loyal to nigeria who are patriotic and very passionate about providing their services living giving their lives up for every nigerian and nigeria as a country those are the kind of people that should head our security outfits you equip them you give them the uh, um, the uh, incentives they need by making sure their salaries are paid and paid on time and their pensions and if anything happens to them their families are taken care of they will go out there and they will lay their lives down for this country and her people that's what we should do and that's the quickest way to solve our security issues of course we can always get external 
additional help if we need it. But I believe that we do have quite enough committed um, security personnel that we may not even need a lot of uh, uh, external help to be able to uh, tackle our security issues. The first thing we need are people who are committed to Nigeria and Nigerians, not to their side. President Buhari has continued to tout the war against corruption as one of, has been one of his major um, good points for his administration. What's your assessment of the war uh, against yes. corruption? He has done nothing in the war against corruption. And but corruption. They have prosecution across the country. Yeah, and then how many have the centers that don't, the, that that's don't, don't give him executive, the executive. Uh, My point is, um, what Buhari is doing is just playing with our minds, and he's succeeding. There are people, my mom, for example, thinks Buhari is doing a good job of fighting corruption because she's always hearing names of people that they have collected money from and repatriation of funds I from don't here think and that's there. Justified. Trust me, it's just propaganda that's not fighting corruption if you want to fight corruption open up the system bring serious transparency and accountability you'll fight corruption before they happen not after they have happened what he's doing is fighting all his enemies all the pdp people that he feels or people from the 80s because you can see how he actually uproots people from then and still does them bad thing so he's fighting all those that he feels owe him and he's making it look like oh we are fighting corruption that's not how to fight corruption if you want to fight corruption bring it to the people open up the system make everything you are doing public Oh, we have XYZ amount, we need to do XYZ, we can put in so much money, but we need extra from here, we are going to get it from there. Let the people be seeing it. Then, nobody would have the guts to steal anything. He himself is the Prime Minister of Petroleum, he is the father of Nigeria and everything, and money is missing. Petroleum funds are missing. Um, what's it called? The subsidy stories we are hearing is in his ministry. The same president that is fighting corruption, the highest level of corruption is happening under him. And you want to convince me that he's fighting corruption? No, I'm not convinced. If he wants to fight corruption, he should open up the system, be accountable to the people, show us where the funds are coming from, where they are going to, who and who is getting what, what we are expecting from them, so we can follow them. If they give you one billion to construct school, and after two weeks, three weeks, we haven't even seen foundation, and we know that you are, we will start following you now. But when they are doing all this, they are secret settling people with Nigeria's money thing, and then they finish it, and then they go and pick somebody. Dasuki, he stole five billion because, and then they pick the other one and jail all the governors they can't get money from. We are fighting APC governors, all the ones we have jailed. Come on, I'm not Recent, deceived. Recently, you shared a story about um, suffering from domestic and sexual violence. Mm -hmm. What would you do to ensure that in your government, victims of these issues get justice in Nigeria? Um, getting justice is one thing. Preventing that such heinous crimes happen is another thing, and I think that's much more important. Uh, we need to bring it to the grassroots. We need to bring it to the people. You don't harm others because you think you can. Because sometimes it's just an ego thing, other times it's a sickness. But the important thing is to make sure you are working on it from where it is most dangerous before it happens prevent that it happens. How can that be prevented? Um, education. Education is one way to make sure that uh, boys and girls, because uh, boys also get molested, you know, uh, young people understand the damage you do to people when you rape them, when you beat them up, when you rob them. There's quite a lot of things we do that seem to be like big deal to us in Nigeria. But it's very important that our young Nigerians understand that these are not the ways to do things because of the impact it has on these people others coming after them and even back to you because they are going to end up having the children that will come back hunting you you know like we need to give the education and then the victims i have met a lot of other people women uh, who have been through similar experiences uh, like i have been through and they haven't even unfortunately dealt with it as well as I have. So a lot of them are still in that place of pain, um, abject, they just feel the world hates them and they're not doing as well as they could because they've never recovered from that experience or those experiences. So we have to have a victim initiative where we can help victims recover from the pains of getting raped getting beaten up by your husband even the parents oh parents do do quite a lot of evil to their children sometimes so we have to be able to initiate programs that will help these victims um let it go let it go and then still face life with uh, enthusiasm because and what happens to the perpetrators 
um, you should punish the perpetrators definitely but you have to also think in terms of rehabilitating them like you don't just throw them in jail and then after 10 14 13 years sometimes our Supreme Court give as little as five years and then they are out and they are worse than before they even went in or they perfect the skills of hiding it so you have to actually rehabilitate them while you are depriving them of their freedom you also in that time impact enough knowledge education and goodwill in them so that when they come out they're actually better not worse than when they went into uh, incarceration for the crimes they've committed yes you have to punish them but you have to punish them with a mindset of rehabilitating them i mean there are odds against you for these elections let's be very realistic about it would you accept an appointment in a um, say a buhari government eh? or uh, <laughs> the administration okay because they are the two major parties okay. in nigeria no. i would not I okay. state categorically, I would not accept any position under a Buhari government. There is no reason but why. But you're I would. open for PDP? Um, I'm open for any of the. I'm a member of the CUPP, so definitely I'm happy to work with PDP, Labour, all the other parties that are under the CUPP. I'm very, very happy with if them. If you're passionate about fixing Nigeria, yes. why is, in, is there in a big no for Buhari? Ah! Buhari is not open enough to allow fresh ideas come. I mean, just look at his appointment. He was appointing people who were dead, who were dead long time ago. If you look at the uh, 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 ambassador, uh, well, whatever. If you look at the ambassador of America, the guy looks like he would die tomorrow. Why would you do that when there are so many talented young Nigerians ready to work, but it's not open enough for him? It's vendetta, vendetta, vendetta. And then when you look at the APC government, I read all the constitutions of all the parties that were existing at the time we started forming National Interest Party. APC had the worst of all the uh, manifestos and constitutions I came across. And I thought to myself, I don't want to have anything with these people because from the day one, they never envisaged a working Nigeria. That's not the kind of set of people you go trying to maneuver things and work with. You won't get anywhere, so there's no need to even try. So God forbid, if Buhari is the president next, Year. Oh my God, I think I'll even go. In fact, I'll just go and have a house opposite Asu Rock so I can be giving him fire so he can at least maybe do something that will be better for us in this country. You have an opportunity to make the final pitch to the Nigerian people. Why should they vote for you? Ah, my people, my tough on a level. Ha, ah, you see, eh, you need to talk true. That's one thing that you guys can be sure of. As I did so, eh, Get them at the top true. And Nigeria, we need them. We need people who they tell us true. You know, be saying we would already agree. Oh, sometimes I will talk the way I will talk. He said, This one, they are not water. But if you look at eh, if you just give me a chance, you go see, say, No matter your water, why I am. I don't think I am. I don't think I am. I don't see how they affect one person and the other. So, no, be even about me. Most times when I they talk, I don't even forget about myself. I know they even exist for the equation. I don't see the other people. I don't hear them. I don't walk. I go here. I don't hear them. I don't see. I don't see. Say, okay, oh, if we don't like this, it will be better for us. So, as I they come out, they vote for me. When I know, say, when I they put person. I know book too, but I also know the problem with they. I know the person where they born, come born inside big house, they chop big plenty food they travel abroad nice side if i have my papa house now i learn swim because when the water call like this you go full everywhere then you go so throw yourself somehow maybe you money they throw your leg and everything till you come out alive and then you go stand god oh hey i came out so don't be saying money don't day i don't enjoy and i said first we really understand where they chook us hmm? and i tell them i say i would tell them not true if i did it they talk and they talk for una. man woman picking now, now, at the entire government for. So, if you give me a vote, now, myself, I put inside government. So, Thank that's you, what I'm saying. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs>